Welcome back, grade 11. Yes, Unit 2 Nord Star to Achilles Heel. How are you guys? Good? Of course you're good. Cool beans. Here we are at the end of Unit 2 already with focus on speaking. So let's flip our page to page 38. Yep, there we are. Focus on speaking. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to review the vocabulary of Unit 2. Yes. Okay, now definitely we're going to look at the bold faced words. What we see here is during their ascent of Mount Kilimanjaro, one of the members of the Achilles Track Club kept an online journal similar to the blog on the next page. Now, fill in the blanks with the words that are listed above each paragraph. Let's take a look. So we've got hardships go far beyond what keeps me going when the going gets tough and those words are for the first block and the second one average misconceptions no small task and stereotypical are for the second block yes and then we've got buckled down devastated diagnosis overcome great odds is for the third block and the last one inspirational makes something look cool Pre, uh, pers persevere and that was it uh, for the last block you're going to pick the correct words uh, for the correct blank to create a block that is complete and makes sense so we're looking as a review at the words and phrases from this unit and not only what the definition and the meaning is but mostly how these words are used in context if you can pause your video and do this go ahead Great, that brings us to the next part, which is expand. Certain words and phrases can have both a literal meaning and a figurative meaning. Literal meaning, figurative meaning. Now compare the two sentences below. Let's take a look. First, yeah, the view from the top of the mountain was spectacular. The climbers turned to each other and smiled happily. In this sentence, the phrase turned to has a literal meaning that they turned their heads and faces to look at each other. So they moved their bodies to face each other. The climb was difficult for many members of the Achilles team who turned to each other for inspiration. Now in this sentence, the phrase turned to has a figurative meaning. The athletes depend on each other for inspiration. This has nothing to do with a body that shifts and changes position. This has everything to do with depending on one another. So the word, the phrase turned to in these two sentences are used in different ways. In the first one, it has a literal meaning. And in the second one, it has a figurative meaning. As a figurative speech means an underlying meaning, you cannot translate that literally. Now what you're going to do is you're going to work with uh, not with a partner, but you're going to do this by yourself. You're going to read the sentences and focus on the bold phrases. Okay, so we've got reach the high point, reach the high point, reach the deep point, down, opened his eyes, another level, reach a new heights. And there are, these phrases are used in two different sentences. And I'd like you to write an L for when it is used and has a literal meaning or you write an F when it has a figurative meaning. So you got to read the sentence and see what it's literally meant or figuratively. You can pause your video to do this. Great. Create. Read the quotes below, then work with a partner. Circle the paraphrase that best explains the quote's meaning. Okay, so there are many quotes. Uh, circle the paraphrase. Oh, what's the paraphrase again? Right? You remember? It's when you say things in a different way. You use different words. So basically, you use synonyms, 
and or a different grammatical structure to say something that has already been stated, but you say it in different words, in a different way, since we cannot copy-paste. Yeah, so circle the paraphrase that best explains the quote's meaning and say whether you, you disagree with the quote. Okay, give examples to support your opinion. Use the vocabulary from the box. Check each word expression as you use it. So, for example, here we've got devastated, diagnosis, go far beyond, hardships, inspirational, take something with cool misconceptions, no small task, overcoming great odds, persevere and stereotypical. We're still going over the vocabulary of this unit. Number one, anybody who lives long enough will eventually become disabled. Rachel Adams, professor and advocate for the disabled. This is what she said. So this is a quote. Um, that's why when we look here, we can see the quotation marks. Now, what does this mean? As I said, you read it and then you circle the paraphrase. So which is the better paraphrase? Is it A, being elderly is a type of disability? Or is it B, if you live a long time, certain body parts will fail? This happens to everyone. Now, so you either choose A or B. Then I'd like you to write down somewhere here on the margins next to it, whether you agree or not. And I'd like you to give an example or a reason to support your opinion why you disagree. If you disagree, tell me why you disagree. Disagreeing with a paraphrase, yeah? Not with both statements, with a paraphrase. Okay. Now, so what I'd like you to use is, um, while you're supporting your opinion, you use the vocabulary from the box. Yeah, so each word expression that you use, would you take it off? So I want you to use any of the words in order to explain your opinion about this. Okay, you can pause your video and do this. Pick either A or B, write your opinion, and check a word that you will use to explain your opinion. Go ahead. Great, grammar. Read the conversation and answer the question. Hmm. My son wants to volunteer with Achilles Track Club. He's planning to train with a blind athlete in the park every Sunday. Isn't running with a blind person a bit dangerous? Well, the Achilles Track Club teaches the volunteers how to run safely. The blind runners hold on to a sort of rope that the sighted people use to guide them. Volunteering for the organization sounds like a very special experience. One, in A's line, what do the bold words have in common to train? In B's lines, running, so we have A to train, to run, to guide. What about B? We have running and volunteering. What do the bold words have in common there? Try to answer that. As we're at it, we're going to look also at what gerunds and infinitives are. Gerunds are basically uh, the base form of the word plus ing. So running, volunteering. Infinitives are always the word to with the base form of the word to train, to run, to guide. Gerunds, yeah, to form the gerund, you add ing. To the base form of the word. So it's a story of reaching new heights and overcoming great odds. Now, some uses of the gerund, you use the gerund as a subject of a sentence, but it can also be the object or a preposition. You can also use the gerund after a preposition, that's what I mean, such as for, in, of, and about. Like when she was diagnosed with blindness, sailors thought about doing sculpture, about doing. So you can use then um, a gerund just after a preposition. Infinitives, to form those, you use to in the base form of the word, like sailor expects visitors to her studio to learn about using their imagination. Some uses of the infinitives could be um, after a B plus adjective combination with easy, difficult, hard, happy, possible, willing, and prepared. 
it was very hard for the Achilles Track Club to climb mountain Kilimanjaro. But you can also use the infinitive after certain verbs, including allow, agree, decide, expect, hope, learn, manage, need, try, and want. For example, one of the Achilles athletes did not expect to reach the summit and almost turned back several times. Yes, so we have Jiron, verb plus ing, the infinitive to plus base form of the word. And here you can see them used in the context. Please answer these two questions, okay? The Universal Design Movement aims to make products and buildings accessible to everyone, including disabled people. Look at the flyer. Okay. We see here the flyer, yeah? Tips to make your home or a community accessible for all. Ramp, grip bar, mechanical lift. Okay. It contains a list of devices that can help the disabled. Discuss how these devices could improve our everyday lives. Use the expressions below the flyer with gerunds and infinitives. Now, the gerunds are mostly, and the infinitives, especially the infinitives, are often used to show purpose. Um, I go to school to study. Yeah, we do things, we do all these things to be careful. So often the infinitives are used to show reason and purpose. Yeah. And it can also happen for um, gerunds. Yeah, so basically you can say make it easier, allow people, stop people from, make it possible, give people freedom, good for, make people aware of, and help people avoid. So basically what uh, I'd like you to do is try um, to see how these devices, RAM, grip bar, and a mechanical lift, could improve our everyday life. And I'd like you to Think about that, you know, like practice that on your own. You don't necessarily have to write that down, but I'd like you to try doing this while speaking by yourself at home using the expressions below the flyer, the gerunds and infinitives. Use gerunds and infinitives in order to make uh, reasons why you think the ramp, either the grip bar or the mechanical lift would be good. Yeah, here is an example. In the 1960s, architect Selwyn Goldsmith invented the concept of the dropped curb, a small ramp on street corners to allow people to cross roads more easily. His idea made a difference for thousands of people all over the world. Nowadays, there are more innovations. For example, it is common to find ramps at the entrances to buildings that make it easier for people in wheelchairs to access those buildings. So we've got to allow, to cross, to find, to access, make it easier. Yeah, the words that we have, uh, the infinitives that have been used to explain the reason and the purpose. Go ahead, pause your video and try it out. Number three, read the information and do the exercise that follows. Since the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed in the United States in 1990, more people have become aware of the changes that must be made in public places to allow individuals with disabilities to deal with their challenges. Government and city officials have more responsibility to provide access to services for people with disabilities. Yes. Think about the difficulties that a person with a physical disability has doing everyday tasks. Like think about it, going to the shop or having to uh, go up the stairs. Or, um, there's a lot of things that might be difficult for people that are either blind or deaf or that cannot walk, you know. Think about that. Complete the chart so that each statement indicates the view of an advocate for the disabled or the view of a government or a city official. Use infinitives and gerunds and as much information as you can. Okay, let's see. Advocate for disabled individuals and government or city official. What are some things that are hard? What are some things that present a challenge? What are some things that are extremely difficult? 
and that are and this will be what people are forced to do or often can't imagine or sure they would be happy please come up with your ideas and fill out this table you can pause your video please remember to use the infinitive and gerund Great. Pronunciation, how we pronounce words in language, what we do with that. Now, in that case, we're going to look at thought groups, means that we thought groups are very interesting. Those are words that we place together to create a thought. So when we speak, we group words together, right? Logically, we join the groups into a sentence or we make groups. The groups are called thought groups. They help the listener organize the meaning of the sentence. Now, for instance, here, let's look at an example. My, My Achilles, Achilles heel, heel was shyness. shyness. I hated going to parties by myself. And I was terrified when I had to speak in a class. When I first got the diagnosis, I was devastated. Thought groups are often grammatical phrases and structures, such as prepositional phases or short clauses. So you can see here, this is one thought group and this is another one. And also often when we talk, um, we most likely pronounce the, the thought group all at once. We don't pause. So there's more, it's more likely to have a pause in between two uh, thought groups, like my Achilles heel or shyness. So you have this pause in between. So that is how the groups are put together uh, in one thought. And they're mostly pronounced all at once. Words can be combined into thought groups in different ways. Okay, Speakers sometimes choose groups of similar length to create a more pleasing rhythm. So similar length. In other cases, the speaker may include two phrases in one group to show that the two phrases are part of the same idea because these are thought groups, so it's like one thought. If the speaker wants to show that the two phrases are different ideas, they will be in a different thought group, okay? So if it's a different idea, different thought group, different thing. One, I realized that everyone is born with gifts. Two, I realize that everyone is born with gifts. Yeah. So these are two different ways how the words in the sentence are grouped, right? In the first sentence, the speaker emphasizes the fact that he or she realized something important. So the phrase, I realized, is separate by itself and is emphasized because probably the speaker wants to point that out, that he or she just realized something. In the second sentence, though, what the speaker realized about everyone, the fact that everyone is born with gifts, is most important. So here, the emphasis is more on everyone and not so much on realize. It is more like, wow, everyone is born with gifts. Pronounce the words in the thought group together smoothly. Pause briefly after one thought group before you start the next thought group. So there's a pause, there's a small or short pause between two thought groups, yeah. My Achilles heel was shyness. One of the misconceptions is that you see black. I just didn't imagine it would be so tough. Awesome. Yeah, my Achilles heel was shyness. One of the misconceptions is that you see black. I just didn't imagine it would be so tough. So there's this very short, brief pause. Okay, cool. So remember, a thought group are just words put together to create one thought, and each thought is separate, each group is separate, and you have a short pause um, in between. Listen to the sentences, and as you listen, mark the thought groups. You can mark them, you can underline them, circle them, highlight them, whatever. Compare answers with a partner. Now we can do that later on, and I want you to um, Try to read them and remember to pause briefly at the end of the one thought group before you start with the next. So first off, listen. While you're listening, please underline a circle or highlight uh, the thought group. So you, I want you to hear the thought groups, which ones are the thought groups and uh, mark that. 
And after that, I'd like you at home by yourself uh, to just try to read them and remember that you pause very shortly between the thought drifts. Okay, before we do that, and uh, look at the sentences first. Awesome, let's go. One. When Sailor received her diagnosis, she thought that was it. Two. She decided to stop painting and turn to sculpture. Three. When people visit her studio, they realize that her art is amazing. Four. They realize that art can involve all of your senses. Five. Ms. Sailor's story is an inspiration for all of us. Awesome, yes. Okay, we continue. Look at the two charts. Take turns creating sentences by choosing one thought group from each column. Oh, create a sentence, choose one thought group from each column. That's fun. If the sentence you create is true, you're, you then, in this case, your partner will say, yes, that's right. If the sentence created is not true, your partner will say, I don't think that's right. Okay, this, these are fun things to do in a class, right? Yeah, you can do that when you're at home. Huh. But then again, we have no choice. So we're going to do this uh, on our own, and let's see what you can come up with. So in our next Zoom meeting, we can try this out, right? Okay, but what you're going to do right now is you're going to pause your video and uh, use parts of the sentence from different, um, uh, choose uh, thought groups from each column and then try to create a sentence. Pause your video. Go ahead. Awesome. So you must have used one from here, one from here, one from here, one from here to make one sentence. So cool. Yeah. And doing that three times and then this start doing it again. Uh, how do we do that? So you could have, you do one here, one here. So you wouldn't have done it like this yet. You make one sentence out of this table and you make one sentence out of this chart or table, whatever you want to call it. So in the end, uh, I think how many sentences did you come up with? One, two, three. Yeah, you come up with three from here and three from here. Awesome. So in the, in the end, in total, you've got six, yeah? So three from here. So this one, you start a visitor and then you start a sailor's work, a visitor in Carol Sailor, and then what comes after this? You start with this, and then what comes after this? And start with here, what comes after that? Which one do you choose? Awesome! Cool, that brings us to the speaking skill. Using specific examples to support main ideas. So when you have, remember the thing I kept explaining to you about the general main idea, which we find general main idea equals thesis statement equals general topic and purpose. Sub main idea equals topic sentence equals subtopic and purpose. Now, a main idea supported by um, general main idea is supported by the usage of topic sentences, and the sub main idea, which is in a topic sentence, is supported and explained by the main points, and the main points are developed and supported by details. Specific examples fall under details. In speaking, just as in writing, it is important to add specific examples to main ideas or main points in order to help listeners understand the, main, the meaning or importance of a com, uh, comment and to add interest. Yeah? Listen to and read the conversation. Underline the main idea and examples that speaker A uses. Carol Saylor seems to have faced many challenges in her life. Really? What do you mean? Well, 
she's a visual artist who is blind. That seems like a challenge to me. And she also said that she's experienced a lot of grief and loss. Now, I want you to use examples to support the main ideas. Here we have conversation one. We have conversation two, three, and four. Now, I want you to use examples in order to show that to support the main ideas. Yeah. So, in a speaking as well as writing, it is super important. Okay, so I mean, like when you develop a body paragraph, developing the topic sentence, you got to use main points, right? Now, when you, as I taught you already, and it's also clear in your journal book, you see in the outline, you have your main points then. But those main points are stated, you got to develop them. And that's where you use details, which can be reasons, facts, and definitely examples. And that's what you're basically doing here. You're going to come up with examples for conversation one, two, three, and four. You can pause your video. Go ahead. Great, that brings us to activity two. Read the sentences about Stephen Hawking and Christopher Reeve. Choose two pieces of supporting information for each sentence from the boxes on the next page and then answer your answer. Share your answer, not answer your answer. I'll still be wrong. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Stephen Hawking. One, Stephen Hawking, world renowned British. Astrophysicist, born in 1942, lived a normal life in many ways. Two, Stephen Hawking achieved incredible things in his lifetime. Three, Stephen Hawking became severely disabled. But these are three things about uh, Stephen Hawking. Now I want you to choose two pieces of supporting information for each sentence on the boxes. So from the boxes. So here we have a three, six points. Um, that could be used as an example to support um, the sentences that you just saw. Yeah? So choose two pieces of supporting information for each sentence. Okay, so two for this, two for this, two for this. So six in total. Which one goes where? Then we've got Christopher Reeve. What did he do? He played Superman, right? Yeah, and um, good, good question though. What is Stephen Hawking famous for? Look that one up. I'd like to hear that in our next Zoom meeting from you. What is Stephen Hawking famous for? Okay, uh, Christopher Reeve already said it. Superman, but who knows? There's something else. So look it up. What other than Superman? What is he famous for? So Christopher Reeve, the American actor, achieved great professional success in his life. Two, Reeve suffered a serious accident when he was 43 years old. And three, Reeve became a strong advocate for disabled people. Now you're going to do the same thing. There's six sentences or specific examples. Uh, put two for each number. You can pause your video to do so. Good luck. Okay, that brings us to the end of the unit, which is our final speaking task, which is your speaking project, which you will prepare and do in your log. In this activity, you will prepare a speech about an obstacle you have overcome or a challenge that you have faced in your life. Try to use a vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and listening and speaking skills that you have learned in this unit. Step one. Use the information in the left column of the chart below to plan a two to three minute speech. Take notes in the right column on examples that will illustrate your main ideas. Practice your presentation. So what are the things you need to look at? Background, challenge, outcome, life lesson. Those are the four things that I have to have. So I want to hear introduction and background, challenge, outcome, life lesson and conclusion. Examples that will illustrate your points. So for the background, provide some information about yourself. Describe the setting of your story. For the challenge, give a description of the obstacle or challenge that you faced. For the outcome, explain how you met the challenge and what happened. And for the life lesson, explain what you learned from facing the challenge. And then you end and round up your speech. This is going to be speech, yeah? not a presentation. 
Step two, so this is basically your planning. Present your speech to the class. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna you make a video out of it. Okay, so you're going to give the speech, you're gonna make a video out of it, and you're gonna upload that. Okay, cool? Cool. The further description and explanations will be given to you and will be in your ebook. Awesome. Great. That brings us to the end of this unit. Um, you did a great job. Of course you did. Um, we will meet together, uh, each other again in the next video and definitely in our Zoom meeting where you can ask questions and where we will discuss everything. Stay excited, be cool, and God bless you. Bye-bye.